Uh, so for the past two weeks, uh, we have met many members of Congress. It's part of our job anyway at the KRG representation. We are always visiting Congress, always in touch with the staff and committees. But there are times when we need to increase and step up our presence, and this is one of those times. So um, this week I have met with 30 members of, uh, excuse me, 20 members of Congress. Last week I met with 10. Uh, I think I've met with about 20 staff in different settings. So uh, we're focusing very heavily on Congress. Two main areas of discussion, the protests across southern Iraq and separately uh, recent events and developments in Syria. So let me start with Syria first. Of course, we are deeply concerned with what happens to our Kurdish brethren in Syria and other communities in Syria as well. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, members of Congress have been outraged by what's happening there. That's uh, their position, regardless of what we say. Um, but it also sh shows that the role of the Peshmerga and the fighters in Syria as well has had a very big <coughs> effect, has had a very bif big effect in garnering support for the people of Kurdistan. Um, so what we've been talking to them about really is the humanitarian aspect of what's happening in Syria. There are two or three hundred thousand people who've been displaced. If they aren't able to return to their homes soon, they will become refugees in Iraqi Kurdistan. We already have one million people that we're taking care of. These are displaced people, refugees from other conflicts. So we're not in a good position to receive another two or three hundred thousand people. Um, so I'm highlighting these issues. I'm highlighting the risk of demographic change, the, hi the risk of instability for the long term in these areas of Syria. And uh, on the other side, uh, the other topic rather that we're focusing on is the protests in southern Iraq. Um, we've been trying to give a wider picture, a, a bigger picture of what's happening rather than just the daily news reports that they might get. So we want them to understand what's happening in the political dialogue right now in Iraq. Um, there is a danger that uh, these protests could still be manipulated in some way. Even though the protests are genuine and the grievances of the protesters are legitimate, there is a threat that they could be manipulated. And I think our friends here need to be aware of that. There's nothing they can do today, but they should, as decision makers, be aware of what's happening in Iraq and to know about it, and also to know our concerns. For example, in uh, Baghdad, there have been some people saying that the Constitution needs to be rewritten. Well, in what way does it need to be rewritten? For us in Kurdistan, the Constitution is the one piece of paper that guarantees our place in Iraq guarantees our status in Iraq, our protections, our rights. So rewriting the Constitution, uh, let's implement it first and see if it works, frankly, before we rewrite it. So these are the issues that I'm raising. But uh, another final point, if I may. Uh, today there was a discussion at one of the think tanks in Washington, and I made the point there as well that you could argue that the Kurds pr had their protest in a way by holding the referendum. We were driven to hold the referendum because we felt that Baghdad didn't have our interests at heart that treated us as second-class citizens. You could argue that in some ways the referendum was an expression of that frustration. It was a our protest. The Sunnis, of course, have also protested previously, for example, when Prime Minister Maliki was uh, in charge and uh, he uh, responded to the uh, protests in a very strong and perhaps negative way. 
So the point I made was the Kurds and the Sunnis have already had their protests. Right now, it looks like it's the turn of the Shia youth who are having their protest. And let's hope that their protest will succeed in putting Iraq on a better track. We all want an end to corruption. We all want more transparency, efficiency, service delivery. We want a government and a parliament at the federal level that is representative of all of the people of Iraq. And for Iraq to benefit from the great wealth of the country. So. Um, these are the ideas that we've been sharing with members of Congress.